everybody wants to be right, you can imagine, from the student who wants to make the, get the right answers on a test, to the engineer who wants to make the right calibrations for his inventions, to the pilot who wants to make sure he lands on the right part of the runway, to the doctor who wants to make the right diagnosis and prescribe the right medicine to his patients, but even so more critically on spiritual matters, people want to be right. But in this quest to be right, it is important to note that sincere belief or right intention may not be enough. We're going to look at three things. Is it right? Why is it right? You are right, remain right. Is it right? Kindness, abortions, adultery, and all the things we see that plagues our society, irrespective of where you live just a crisis for food and water, or even just a crisis of pandemic, which is there, but a crisis of character and moral integrity. But you are different because you've been converted either before now or some of you as recently as yesterday. You made a decision for Christ and you repented and you turned away and you decided to follow what was right. But as you continue in your journey, some questions may come up. Are my beliefs correct? Because you see that there were others who did not respond like you respond. You ask yourself, is something wrong with me? As you see that for some of those people, they appear to even thrive in their field, or maybe even do well, so to say, despite the fact that they are not walking according to what you know to be right. Could I be mistaken? You ask yourself, am I right? And that leads you to look into God's command. That clearly says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw near when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. God's command that says, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. God's command that says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of a believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in faith, in purity. And based on that, we arrive at the godly conclusion that heaven and earth may pass away. Things may change around me, but the word of God, not one jot or a tittle, will pass. And that we need to stand on that word. But you ask yourself, as you seek to fulfill and to follow the commands of God, why is it right? Why is this way the right way? To fully answer that question, we may need to take a step back and look into what or who determines what is right or wrong. In our society today, many things try to determine or define what is right or what is wrong. From the news media to celebrities to the Supreme Court to science to social media, to the masses, popular demand. For some, they decide everybody should have a say what's right or wrong. Or um, there are a few who say nobody. It should be relative, depending on how you feel. And that's the world we find ourselves in. But the question is, can it really depend on how we feel? the question of what is right or what is wrong. Is it really relative? When you try to examine that hypothesis or that thought, you find out that even by the world standard, it 
only attempts, they only attempt to apply it in the area when it comes in the context of modesty and the spiritual context. They will not apply that same principle to science or to aviation, for instance. A pilot flying a plane, trying to land it, and telling his people, the people on the plane, that I see the runway there. Many may think that that's the right place to land, but I feel that the river is the right, right place to land. And because right or wrong is not absolute, I can choose to land in the river. Of course, you will agree with me that such a pilot will be quickly put away with and his theories will be quickly dispelled because in that instant, right or wrong cannot be relative because lives depend on it. And it should be the same when it comes to spiritual matters in spiritual context where spiritual life and death also depends on it. You see, anybody can define anything especially in this world of social media. Anybody can have a platform these days. You don't... ...of a thing. Maybe you see an appliance or an electronics or an invention you've never seen before. And you really want to know, how does this work? How should it work? How can you determine that? You will agree with me that one way would be to ask. But who do you ask? It makes sense to ask the owner. Who owns this? And if the owner cannot give you a satisfactory answer, then the next best thing, if you can, is to ask the maker. And fortunately for us, the owner and the maker of our souls has declared himself he said in his word, Behold, all souls are mine, from the soul of the Father to the soul of the Son. And he also said that these people have I fought for myself. They shall show forth my praise. So, who determines what is right is not a what, but a who. And to now determine what does God say about what is right, we have to go back to the beginning where the concept of right and wrong was first contradicted. Remember the story in the garden. When the serpent came to Eve, he said, did God say? Because he knew that the, credib the, the, the credibility of the command had a lot to do with the credibility of the person making the command. So in that few sentences between the serpent and Eve, he tried to discredit the commander so that Eve would not take serious the command of what is right. And you know what happened from there. So really, if we really want to know what is right or who determines what is right or wrong, we have to go back to God and back to his law. Because God's laws reflect his holy character, we cannot isolate the commandments of God from his character. The Lord Jesus was the visible image of the unseen God. And that's why he could boldly say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So you are right. Remain right. Nothing is wrong with you. Even though you may look different when you look at the world around you, I want you to note that the world needs you. Look at your neighbor and tell them the world needs you. A short story. One of my leaders, a mentor, he was out in a work retreat with a group of people in the Western world here. And all of them, at a point in time, decided to go and engage in an activity. And they all jointly decided that that was right. But he, based on his knowledge of God, he said, no, that's not right. And he stood alone in that decision. They railed against him, persecuted him, accused him of a lot of things. But he stood his ground. 
as you will stand your ground. But do you know what happened? Later that day, when the chips were down, the leader of that team came to him. Maybe a little bit like the way Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, I have a problem. It's a big problem. Maybe even a spiritual one. The person did not know. He said, I have all these cheerleaders around me, but I've seen how they behave. None of them can help me, but I've seen you. There's a light in you. You can help me. Your light will shine in a dark world by God's grace. You are right. You are not alone. But even if it appears that you are, you have to realize that one with God is a majority. You are right. You are in good company. Because as you stand alone to be right, you will stand, you are standing like Joseph, who became the prime minister of Egypt after refusing to defile himself with fornication. You are standing like the King David, who was also a prophet in Israel, who after he sinned, he uniquely and openly repented alone to God. You are standing like a great president, Daniel, who succeeded four kings because he refused to defile himself with a portion of the king's meat when everybody else was doing that. You are standing like a great pastor and apostle, the apostle Paul, who when he received the commandments of God, did not confer with flesh and blood. And like the other disciples and the other apostles, he decided that it was better to obey God rather than men. You are right. Stay right. Being morally right is not always popular, but it has immeasurable dividends. Divine approval, divine protection, because remember, the Lord says, touch not my anointed. As you remain right, you remain the anointed of the Lord. Divine connection. When you stand for what is right, you'll be connected with those who are right. Divine favor. Remember, when in man's ways, please the Lord. He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Invariably, the reverse is the case for those who who reject God's truth and persist in sinful and immoral practices. So my closing challenge to you is, how much are you worth? And to answer that question, you also have to go back to the author of your soul and to his word that says you are royalty. Look at your neighbor and say, I am royalty. That's why you can't act anyhow. That's why you can't just wear anything. That's why you can't just behave anywhere. That's why you can't just be found in any place. That's why you cannot just eat or drink anywhere. Because you are royalty. Value yourself. Your faith is precious. It cost God his only begotten son. It cost the son his life, his blood. Value your Christian experiences. You are so valuable to God that the Son of God had to die to redeem you. So if you've been saved, you are right. Stay right. But if you've not been saved, you've not been converted, you have not repented, and you are still walking with the popular opinions of the world, in crisis, get right with God. And I know that at this impact program, many of you did it yesterday. And many more will do it today and the days coming. Get right. Stay right. Hold on confidently till the very end. You will stand before kings. You will not stand before mean men. Thank you very much. And at this point, I will hand over to the moderator to handle the, take the questions that will be handled by Mr. Ni Adidoku. God bless.
something very enlightening. I believe you've got something inspiring. Be inspired and stand in the right place. Amen. Now, we're going to give time to questions. So if you have questions to ask here at this physical location, can you please just Amen. proceed to the front here, and you'll be given opportunity to ask your questions. And as you ask your question, Mr. Ni Adidukun is going to give answers to those questions. Come straight to the front here. Can I see you coming straight to the front? One, two, three. Can I see anybody? Now come straight to the front so that you can ask your question. I can see a lady first. Another young man. Another young man, quickly come. Go, st go straight to your question. No preamble? Yes, the lady first. Straight to your question. Praise God. Okay, I have a question. As he has presented it on us being right and just getting to know that being right is all can only come from God. How do we present this to our parents when we are having conflicts of interest? Like when you are you know you are doing the right thing, but your parents don't believe that. They have a different view. How do you come to, how do you present it to them so that we can both settle things and not be in conflict because of our different views? Thank you very much. That that fellow That's in Holy fellow Day Best, Holy Day Life. Yes, Best. can you ask your question straight to the question? Okay, good evening, everyone. Well, my question is that there are situations in which young people feel something is right, whereas in actual sense, it's actually wrong. And there are situations in which what they think is right. Is wrong. So my question is simply, how can we know the right kind of right? And how can we right our wrongs? That is why you are here. You will get it right and flow right in Jesus' name. Another lady, before I go back to that other man. The Thank online you. audience, please get your question into the boxes and it will be attended to. Yes, that lady. My question is, how do you react when the people that are supposed to, supposed to support you are not supporting you and they doubt every action that you take? It's OK when you are alone. Uh, that's our brother. Yes. The next brother with uh, no mask. Praise the Lord. So in uh, considering what is right and what is wrong, when it happens that I've gone far into doing what is wrong, and maybe I've become a manager using fake results and almost everything is fake, and I'm now getting it right by coming in contact with Jesus. How do you right the wrong? How, how, how do you right the wrong? Right? Yes, how will I, how will I start afresh to... That is why you are here in impact. Amen. And you will have impactful answer. Amen. Uh, well, the rest of you, you can still stay there. If I have sufficient time, um, we are going to attend to those questions. Yes, Mr. Niyade Dokun, can you respond to these four questionnaires? Well, for, for a comprehensive approach to it, can we have some online, two questions online. We have some questions online. This one is from Justice Patrick. He says, as regards being consistent, is it out of place to pick interest in different ideas and facets when posting content online. And another one from A.I. Brown says, can one sound genuine when telling a story online? 
Those are the two questions for now. So, our guest lecturer, Mr. Adedokun, can you please provide answer to these six questions? Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity given to us to share with uh, the young people today. Um, the first question that I was able to hear from the audio was on relationship with uh, your parents, especially if it appears as though uh, you are right and uh, your parents are wrong. Um, the, the very important to understand that uh, God who made us does not contradict himself. Uh, he tells us to honor our father and our mother, our parents, so that our days may be long. And so uh, even if you find out you are right about something, you must be very respectful uh, to your parents and spend time to pray so that your parents will understand that thing. Especially if their disagreement with you is not leading you to do something wrong. If your parents are trying to force you to do something wrong, then you will be able to stand and say, no, but uh, respectfully, I cannot do it because God is a higher authority in that case. But you at no time disrespect your parents because that will not be compatible with what God wants for you. On the question about um, how do you know what is right? Of course, from the presentation today, uh, you could see that there are many sources of, uh, of authorities that uh, could mislead. And we saw a list of, of those authorities. Uh, cannot depend on media celebrities. You cannot de depend on just science. You can't depend on even revered institutions to, to determine right. So you go to the source of all right and wrong. You go to God. And how do you go to God? God has given you the Bible, his word, his inerrant word, the supernatural word of God that will tell you what is right. But as you read the Bible, there are other things things you will use to know what is right. For example, think about who is the father of this thing? Who, which father produced this thing? What fruit does it produce? Then you look at what future it predicts. If you look at a particular thing and you see that the source of that thing, the father of that thing, this thing is not from God. This seems to come from somewhere that is not of God, then you know that thing is not right. If you look at the fruit it produces, the Lord Jesus Christ said, by their fruits, you will know them. You look at the, the outcomes of participating in that, in that thing, you know that, no, this, I cannot do this. Then you look at the future, I predict. What is the future if I participate in this thing? Then you know that if that future is not looking good, that is not the type of thing to do. Somebody asked the question on, if I've gone very far, how do I get back? I have used fake results. How do I get back to start my life again? I'm glad you are in impact. You will learn a lot about how to do that. But I'll just tell you that the prodigal son uh, that the Bible tells us went very, very far. In fact, so far that the father could not see him. The family could not see him. But one day, he decided that he was tired of a life lived in, 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 in penury and darkness. And he decided to rise and go back home. And when he went back to, to, to his father, his father embraced him. That's the way God will embrace you and then will start repairing uh, your life from them. But it needs your sincerity. It needs that genuine heart of repentance. And then God can begin to re uh, rebuild your life from, from, from the broken pieces. Uh, somebody asked a question um, about posting content online. Uh, yesterday in the presentation about, about branding, uh, we learned some principles principles of how to be careful in what you put online so that um, the content you put out there does not in any way negatively affect you because you must understand that anything you send online almost has a digital a digital in quote eternal life because it stays there and people will, can assess it at any time so you must be very careful when you are posting content online to, to, to make sure that the things you're posting are, are things that are edifying. And the, 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 the Bible is just a wonderful guide telling us that whatsoever you are posting, let it fit the principles. Is it true? Is it honest? 
Is it of good report? You know, is it lovely? And you think of those principles before you post uh, those things. Can you be genuine online? Yes, you can be genuine online. If you are true to yourself, if your heart is true, whatever is inside of you is, is what will come out. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Thank you. Yes. Let me have just one person more. Yes, just one. That's my brother. Can you ask your question? And another one online. Just straight to the question. Good sir. My, sir, my question is just when you are used on what to do and you ask your parents to help you and they are always saying that they are coming, they are coming, they, are, they do not have time. So what sh should we do about that, sir? That's my question. Online, the last question. So those of you in the physical location, please, you can go and take your seat. We are very sorry. We don't have the generosity of time to take more questions. Online. Just one question. This one says, is from Oweri. It says, when you are wrong and people say you are right, how will you know right inside of you that you are right, especially when people are saying you are wrong? Can you please take it again? This question is coming from a worry. He wrote, when you are wrong and people say you are right, how will you know right inside you that you are right when people still believe that you are wrong? His name is Wisdom from Oweri. Philosophica. Mr. Niyadidukun. The audience is all ears. God bless you as you give the answers. Thank you very much. On the question of our young um, uh, boy that asked the question about uh, parents not having time, uh, that's a challenge to us as parents uh, who are watching and uh, to, to make time for our children. This is the time we have them. Let's give the best to them. But for the, for, for the young man, if your parents do not have the time for you, um, if you're attending a Bible-believing church, you will have a children church leader. You will have other people in your, uh, in your children fellowship or in your school fellowship that you could, uh, you could turn that um, question to who will be able to help you. So make sure you are reaching out if you are in such a situation uh, that uh, your parents are not able to help you. Talk to your parents. Make sure you find the time that they, are, that they can help you. But also, make sure that you have a relationship with the church leaders who will be able to help you in that situation. Uh, on the question, the philosophical question uh, that was raised about what of if I, uh, people say, I think I'm right on my inside, and somebody says you are wrong. We must be very careful about our inside, as we learned today in the presentation, because uh, uh, the heart of man, the Bible says, is deceitful and desperately wicked. And so whatever we are feeling inside must match with something beyond us, something outside of us, that is the word of God. So we must be, make sure that we are measuring whatever we feel inside of us with God's word, with the revelation of God, so that we can be sure. Because only God is right all the time. And so that's why we need to depend on him to confirm whatever we are feeling at that time. And to, for, for the brother who asked the question about, you know, having done exams and having done that with respect to restitution, please make sure you talk to your leaders. They will guide you on how to go about such restitution that are, that are sensitive. God bless you. 
Amen. What's the bottom line? In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, it says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. The bottom line, if it is scriptural, it is right. And internalizing it, you have to make a decision. I will be scripturally compliant. Can you say that? And I'm sure I'll be right. Take a moment, reflect on this thing, and pray silently. Father, I want to be right. Help me to be right. Connect me with Christ, who is right. Internalize it. Connect with God. Now we connect with choir.